Hello and welcome back to my garage here in Car Mechanic Simulator 2018 where we have today's project car already ready to go. This is one that I have been hoping to find for a while. This is of course a Dodge Viper. Uh, current value is $58,000. Uh, I found this in the junkyard. Um, I went and did several trips to the junkyard. I, uh, I think I went to the junkyard like three times and the third time I found this car which is one I have been hoping to find for a while but the only thing I regret is that I wasn't recording at the time because I really wanted to do a video where I found the Viper in the junkyard so maybe at some point I'll get lucky and be able to do that but since I have the car I'll go ahead and knock it out and see how much we can get for it There's no radiator, and there's there is the other pieces. I think the I did one of these once a long time ago. It's been a there's the air filter, but I'm pretty sure I have to wait. No, I think I'm pretty sure I have to wait until I get the engine built before I can even do the air filter and stuff, because I think it's attached to the front here, the the front of the manifold. Clear our inventory of the junk. And now we need to get our interior pieces and our body parts. I imagine I saw it was called steering wheel viper, seat viper, okay. Naturally, of course, this car does not have a back seat. And if it did, you would only want to put people you didn't like in it. Car has a front uh, front license plate or not? I'll just buy one in case. I mean, every car in the game ha has at least a rear license plate, but a bunch of them. Well, most of the not. I'm not going to say most. A bunch of the modded cars don't have a front plate, and some of the in-game cars or some of the DLC cars rather don't have a front plate. And I've only ever done one of these before, and I can't remember if it had a front plate or not.
Yep, no front plate. Okay. Body condition 100%. Perfect. And we've already gone from 58 grand to 131 grand just by replacing the body parts. So let's go ahead and clean it up now, see what it looks like. I guess the factory color on it is white. 140, 144 grand with the frame, body, and interior all 100%. So you could sell it right now. Mm, wouldn't make 100 grand on it selling it, but still, it would be a it would be a nice um, little profit at that point. Which of course we're not going to do. That's not what we do here. The exhaust stuff is in the front. Yeah, it comes out the side over here. So it's all V10A exhaust pieces. Look at that. No performance exhaust parts. Bummer. There's that air filter stuff. Yeah, this one here for the Viper. The 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 Dodge logo with the with the like the two chevrons is for the Viper. The one with the, the big red ram, that's for the pickup truck. There's the middle muffler. Oh, there we go, front exhaust section. I'm missing something else. Where is the middle muffler, front... Oh, there it is, rear muffler. We need to get our fuel tank, too. Okay, now let's go ahead and paint this thing. I don't think I want to leave it white. What does it have for livery? Eh, it's not that's not bad with the white, maybe. Like gray stripes, red stripes, white stripes. Hmm. I think I'm going to do my personal favorite here. Let's go a little bit brighter. Yeah, that'll do.
Yes, now that's what I'm talking about. That is a good looking car now. 155 grand. Haven't done any real work on it yet. <laughs> I noticed that it has sport tires on it at the moment, but I'm going to have to put race tires on it at least because the engine that we're going to build is going to be an absolute monster. And sport tires will just, when we go out on the track, the sport tires will just be all over the place. Though I was thinking about it uh, after the last time, I think when I drove the uh, Aston Martin, the DB11, and I flipped the car and rolled it down the track, because I don't have a steering wheel, I'm doing this with keyboard and mouse, I wonder if... The, normally what I do is I just mash on the, on the go button and go full speed ahead straight along the line. And I think that when the transmission shifts gears, that it, uh, that's when it causes it to start... That's when it causes it to jerk around. So maybe if I just try to control my acceleration instead of just mashing on the go button, We'll see what happens, though, when we get out there with this car, because I have a feeling it's going to do the same thing. What did I miss there? That's clearly not a good one. Huh, maybe I didn't take it off. here. I don't see any uh, crankshaft caps or rod caps again. No oil pan. Whoops. But then like no junkyard car I've ever worked on has come with an oil pan. I imagine they're probably all just totally corroded out. Sometimes when I go to take parts off, if you get a little bit ahead of the game, and when you're taking off nested pieces, like when you get off the brake, get off the brake disc, and then you get the hub, and or you try to get the hub, but you can't, you have to get the uh, hub bearing out, and it'll sit there and kind of flash at you because you've gotten one piece out, but it's not ready for you to get the next one out, and you're like, ah, just let me have it. Get our rear end rebuilt now. So let's start off with the bushings, which is which once again is going to be 16 of them. And those are shock A. So that's rear sway bar B. 
I really should try to remember those when I take them off, because I always have to go back and look. And we'll get our brakes. Okay, and the clutch pieces which can all go away because I'm going to buy performance parts. Okay, and I think the hub, get the hubs, and after that we'll try to repair things. Wheel hub three. Okay, let's try and dismount these tires. We'll t we'll bleh, we won't try, we'll dis- oh, that's five percent, we're not going to repair that one. I was going to say we'll try to repair the rims, but 5%, uh, we're not going to get that one back. Thirty percent on that one, so we'll probably be able to repair one of them. Let's see, these are 355-3019. Okay, let's see what we can repair now. Something broke, I didn't see what it was. Definitely only got one rim. Didn't get the drive shaft, didn't get the gearbox. That's fine. I, I only ever repair the gearboxes for the per I only ever repair the gearbox so that I can sell it. Because the fully repaired I mean the generic gearbox what does it sell for? I have to P10A gearbox to buy it, $2,700. Probably would sell for like $900 repaired. But as it is now, I only get to sell it for scrap value. Okay, let's get a Rim Viper 19. Looks like, looks like, let's see, one, three of the rear suspension arms and the rear suspension cross member. and a rear drive axle, and then we'll have everything. Okay, we get these tires mounted and balanced, and then we can reassemble the back end. Let's go ahead and go move the engine crane over now, because we're going to need it.
I knew I, I knew I only did, had two wheels there, but for some reason I thought, did I not get them both? But of course I did. It is so satisfying to assemble one of these things. I mean, when it's all nice and pretty and all the rusty pieces are gone and it's nice and shiny new metal. I mean, it's a complex... It's, it's, a, it's complex in the sense that it's more complex than the other rear suspensions, the leaf spring and the coil spring. But putting it together really is satisfying. Excess pieces. Oh wait, why do I have that? I wonder. That must be left over from. The, I must have bought an extra one when I was working on the other car. And surely I put those fan housing. I did not. Uh, oh well, I can put that on later. It's like I knew I bought the fan housing for the radiator. I guess I didn't put it in. Clearly I didn't put it in because it's not there.
Okie doke, now. So 12 bushings. Tie rods and brakes. God, I can't type tie rod now. I'm pretty sure that was sway bar B. Yep. get the stuff for our double wishbone suspension. I got them both. Okay, good. Boy, really bang that down quick. Let's dismount the tires again. 32% on that rim. We should be able to repair that one. See, these are two ninety five thirty eighteen. Yep, bought the correct size tires. I always check because I've I've screwed it up enough times. I hate to buy the wrong size. Oh, I failed to repair that rim. Got me anyway. Thought I thought I had it. So that was rim viper 18. And I think was the cross member as well. No, it wasn't. Suspension arms. Okay, now we just need to get these tires mounted and balanced, and then we can reassemble the front. I think I timed that one a little bit better. The uh, the second tire mounted just a little few uh, just a few seconds before the wheel balance are finished. The mounting machine is so much faster than the balancer. I mean, I I have set, I have I mean I've I've started doing tires and I've gotten like three of them mounted before the first one finished balancing.
Let's see. I want to put the bushings in. Put the bushings in the cross member. I always, re I always recommend putting the bushings in the cross member early, because if you forget, it's always fun to try to find it again. Okay, halfway there. Ah! The camera's like looking through the radiator. Okay, I think that's... Yeah, I, I always... I like to get the suspension done before I actually mount the tire. Because uh, if, if there's something that you missed behind it, it's hard to find it again once the tire's in the way. Especially when it's a great big tire like these Viper tires are. Okay, it looks like something now, doesn't it? So it's 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 you could say it's completely fixed except for the fact that it doesn't have an engine in it. <laughs> and it's worth two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars now. And we paid I think I, and the value when I began was what, fifty five, fifty eight, something like that? There's a push rod. There's a couple of a couple of push rods there that I can that I see. This thing is gonna this thing is gonna have push rods and rocker arms. Yeah, see there's a put there's a rocker arm there. Where are the spark plugs? Oh, there they are. So at least it only has 10 spark plugs. So V10A push rod, 20 of them. And then V10A rocker arm, 20 of those. Ten spark plugs. And the engine head. Is V10A. I think. I better make sure before I spend three thousand dollars. 
Yeah, V10A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Engine head A, V10A for $2,800. Engine head B, V10A, also for $2,800. Just has regular pistons. Whoops. Let's go ahead and get pistons and rings. Oil pan V10, oil filter V10. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think pretty sure I'm going to need those for the Viper. Let's turn this thing over first. So I need four camshaft cap, four crankshaft caps, and ten rod caps. Okay, and we can kind of. I kind of feel like there should be an animation for a trash bucket because <laughs> these these rings they like a dollar for the, the, the trashed rings, seven bucks for the trashed pistons. Just feel like you, I feel like there should be a trash bucket animation where you just throw things away. Well, uh, that crankshaft was a very low percentage. What was it, like five? Probably won't get that one back. Well, we repaired the block at least. V10A crankshaft, where are you? Oh, V10A camshaft too. Let's go ahead and get some of that, because I know, let's see, I know I'm going to need these. And probably two of those. V10A intake manifold. No, just one of them. Ignition wires A and B. I need two throttles. Probably need a bunch of these ignition coils, but I don't remember how many. Oh wait, I'm sure I'm going to need an alternator and a power steering pump. Unless there's a V10 power steering pump. Yep, there is. No, wait, that's for Porsche. Water pump V10. Timing cover V10A. Water pump pulley V10A. Timing chain V10A. Camshaft gear? Yes. V10A camshaft gear, cam gear. Only one of those, because this is this is an overhead valve engine. How thick this thing is. That built like a battleship. Crankshaft V8, power steering pump I4B, okay.
Okay, roller B, two roller Bs, crankshaft pulley V8. I thought I might have bought that belt, but I didn't. I imagine I probably will need a serpentine, uh, not a serpentine, I probably will need a belt tensioner. Or maybe not. No, it's gonna need, I'm definitely gonna need another roller. I can see it right there. Roller A. Front end of the engine is already done. Well, let's get the rest of it put together. Okay, let's get it turned over. Just occurred to me that I know I'm going to need a starter for this. Might as well get it now. This is different. This is a. <coughs> Pardon me. This is a different kind of engine from the ones that I've been doing because uh, a lot of the modded cars use the Pagani V12. Um, some of them use the Porsche V10 that's in the Carrera GT. I don't think hardly, I don't think any modded cars that I have encountered myself use uh, the V10. The Dodge V10, rather. There's also a V10V that's in the SRT pickup truck. Hopefully I will find one of those so that I can do it for this. Because that's going to be a good one to do as well. Get a pickup truck that goes 200 miles an hour. I'm sure this Viper will be that fast, though. Should have put the spark plugs in first. The manifold is in the way. Wow, that's a lot of bolts. Kind of surprised that there's nothing. There's nothing in this space underneath the uh, intake manifold. Great big open hole there.
Okay, now the fun part. Engine head cover V10A. Let's go ahead and get those. Oh, a lot of bolts again. Ah, there's those coils. So there's ten of them. I suppose that's logical. And we're gonna have to bolt these things down too. Oh yeah, I did buy the coil cover. I was just thinking there's a coil cover for this, but I, I bought them already. Where's the? Yeah, there it is. And there's the wires that I bought. So that's what that looks like. Excellent. just about done once this engine is assembled and back in the car and then we throw in the rest of the uh, the running gear and then we can test it and see what we've what we've built Okay, that is done. Do a quick run around the engine, make sure that nothing is missing. Still seems like there should be a tensioner or a roller or something in there. Yep, looks like all the parts that are... It looks like everything is there that's supposed to be there. So now let's go ahead and uh, throw it back in the car. Well, in the car, I guess. Since what we're putting in there is bearing very little relation to what came out of it.
Okay, and that should be a hundred percent now. A hundred ninety-eight. What did I for what did I forget? Let's see, what's in my inventory? Ah, of course. Does that say V10 8.4 liter? That's a monster engine. There we go. 100% across the board. Excellent. Now, let's go see what kind of a monster we've built. So we went from 645 horsepower to 1,048. That seems like a... Uh, what, what did it say it was? Uh, I got away from it. I think it was like a 60% 60, 60 increase, something like that. I'm sure this is a car that somebody will go out and kill themselves in. Actually, that reminds me. I remember... Anybody remember Christopher Titus? Well, he's not gone, but I, I can I remember him talking in one of his comedy routines about making a lot of money from his TV show, and he ran out and bought a Dodge Viper and promptly wrecked it because <laughs> it was so much car and he wasn't used to it. That's that's what this car is. This is a lot of car. Interior modeling looks pretty good. I wish you could touch things inside the car, though. You know, change the change the screen and uh, manipulate the gear shift and whatnot. It's definitely very well done, but it is, I mean it is a DLC car. It's not a mod car. That they built it in house. It looks really good. So let's go out and drive it now. Let's see if we can keep it in a straight line on the track. Here we are. Oops, I got stuck there for a second. Let's take a look, see at the car. Yes, 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 yes. This here is a good looking car. The red might be a trifle dark for my taste. I might I like them a little bit more vivid. But it definitely looks good. If I didn't already have one of these in my personal collection, I would seriously keep it. <laughs> but I kept the first Dodge Viper that I found a long time ago, and this is only the second one I've ever found. Alright, let's drive it, see what happens. the trick to uh, when it starts to skid let off the gas because I have been just mashing the gas pedal and it's skidding all over the place 218 miles an hour well that's pretty darn good I think I'm sure I could get more speed out of it if I messed around with the gearing. But that's not really the point of this whole exercise. Alright, let's go ahead and go back. Okay, so we have completely rebuilt the car. We've sat in it, we've driven it. Now we can go ahead and sell it. And we have 
the car that started with a value of about it was fifty five or fifty eight thousand something like that up to four hundred and twelve thousand with a restoration bonus of fifty eight so it's going to be five hundred thousand dollars or so ah not quite four hundred and ninety five grand still that that right there is the kind of payday that I'm looking for So that will go ahead and wrap this up. Um, I really wish I had. I really, I really wish I had recorded finding that car because I think it would have been more exciting to show discovering it. But uh, it is what it is. Maybe I'll find another one at some point, and I can do the whole process from buying it to fixing it and selling it. But anyway, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again for our next uh, junkyard. Uh, adventure. And on that note, bye for now.